Hey everybody, Haku here with my review for Tower of God Chapter 407 or Season 2 Episode 327. Uh, I really loved this week's. Like I said, well like I've been saying every week, this arc is amazing. Uh, so I'm not going to just go over saying that same thing again. But yeah, the arc's amazing. I love this chapter. Uh, sorry that this is a day late. Just uh, didn't really feel that well last night, but I took my notes yesterday. Um, so, sorry about that. But either way, let's talk about this chapter. I loved it. I love Kalavan as a character already, and we just kind of only saw Coon Royale Elliot, but I love him already. I guess it's not too fair since we know absolutely nothing about the character yet, uh, but just from design alone. Uh, and it's a cool name. Se our second Elliot. I said that in the live reaction. Uh, but either way. So uh, let me start talking about it from the beginning, uh, lest I forget anything. And then at the end, there's kind of actually a lot to discuss. Uh, but I'll talk about that after I get about talking about it scene by scene. Uh, so we start off with uh, Kalavan just planning to ignore Jinsung at first. Just like, teleport the ship, let's get out of here, guys. Um, but uh, but Jinsung has the cyborg Buen bring him El Rabina. So we learned that he didn't just destroy the ship carrying El Rabina. He actually stole El Rabina. So, um... Or maybe we should call it El Lobina, because somebody mentioned in the comments, I'm sorry, I don't remember who, was it Martin Paletti, perhaps? It might have been them. Uh, sorry, I don't always remember which name is connected with which comment uh, off the top of my head. But they were like, so I know Spanish, and I don't believe El Rabina means anything at all, so is it just something that CU thought sounded cool? Uh, so from that I was like, well, it's something I could research really quick. So the first thing I looked up, I was like, um... I was like, so if there's a translation error, I know from reading a ton of manga and stuff, one of the easiest things to mix up would be to use an R instead of an L. So I was like, I'll just look up if El Lobina is anything in Spanish before. I've never heard the word Lobina, but I'll look it up. And of course it was like sea bass or something like that. So I was like, okay, that's obviously what uh, CU meant is El Lobina. Um, given that so many things in Tower of God are named after fish or are named after other nautical or maritime terms. Uh, El, Lob El, Lo El Lobina being the, uh, being the deep sea bass. Definitely, uh, definite, or sea bass definitely, um, sounds like what it's meant to be. So, uh, yeah, for the future, I don't know if I should just call it El Lobina because I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to be or not. It's kind of like the Joaquin Joaquin uh, situation. Uh, because they translate it and spell it as Hoaquin or Hoaquin, um, but I'm pretty sure that CU's trying to say Joaquin. Uh, it's just that, of course, the J in Spanish makes an H sound, obviously, so that's why the translators would just put an H, because they didn't really know uh, what he was going for, I guess. Um, so that's why I always pronounce it as Joaquin, because I'm just assuming that that is what CU means, since he does, again, give a lot of Spanish names to characters. Uh, but either way, moving along, um, Jinsung says that, of course, the El Labina is one of the deadliest weapons in existence. Uh, so we see the third division commander for the first time, uh, Nyono Wan, and I've got to say, out of the four division well i'm assuming we've seen all four divisions now because i'm assuming the one that went after yuan sung is division four uh so out of all of the division commanders we've seen Nyono wan is kind of the lame one i mean look at chonhee look at sharon who has a great design look at yolker who has a badass design and then there's Nyono wan looking like a lame et uh so no i'm not a huge fan of Nyono wan uh, but Kalavan, when he does come out of the ship, he comes with three people, including Yonowan. So that makes me guess what I was saying is true, where I was like, I think there's three people at the head of each division, uh, because he's called the, uh, he's called the battalion commander, I think. Was it battalion commander? It might have been company commander, is what, um, Fonsa called Drac is called. But it seems like he is, like, just below, and it doesn't seem like there are other company commanders alongside him. He's the only one in the division that's been given that title. So I think that maybe that's not, like, the perfect translation of what he is or anything. Uh, but I think that just means he's, like, second lieutenant, essentially, to Chonhee. Chonhee is at the helm of things for the division. Then beneath her is uh, Dorian. Then beneath him is Drac. 
and I think that goes for every, um, and I've been saying that I think that goes for every division, because we saw Chatanawa um, alongside, um, uh, what was his name? I don't even remember his name. The guy that got Cool Nissan K, the guy that got completely destroyed, and uh, Sharon, and then we saw Tinker Yolche, Yolker, and this unnamed third ranker that was with them. So I think that three people coming out with Kalavan, they're the three in charge of uh, Squadron 4, and that further confirms what I'm thinking about the three sort of high ranks at the top of each division. Um, so then, in addition to that, there was... There was the blog, it was translated this week, but there wasn't anything too important except two notes that I'll throw in as we get to them. Uh, and one I'll throw in here is that, I believe it was last week actually, in last week's blog, because that was up too. Um, See you said that Kalavan is a character with layered true motives. So I think that's interesting, and I think it makes a lot of sense, because we still don't know why he aligned with Zahard's army. We'll get kind of that to that later in his backstory but it makes sense that his character, we don't really know why he's working with Zahard right now. Uh, so we don't know how loyal he actually is or anything like that, but I love Kalavan's design. I think his design is really cool. And I love his backstory, but again, we'll get into that. So Jin Sung at first just tries to scare him away. He's kind of just saying, you know, you can fight me here or you can leave. He's just basically trying to get him to back off and not go to the um, 44th floor. Uh, but Kalavan orders his men to back off and says he'll just beat Jinsung. He's very confident about it. Uh, then we start getting into the backstory. Jinsung found him 3,000 years ago uh, when he went to look for a ranker guarding what was called the Essence of Bravery. And it was in a wild area of the tower that's outside of the influence of the or a wild area of the floor in the tower that's outside of the ruler's influence. So that's cool that we still have villages and areas that are basically undiscovered, these wild areas. Um, and I forget where it was said, maybe it was in like the early volume one lore blog uh, translations, uh, because he was just dropping a lot of lore that not all of it is super, um, super reliable anymore back then. But one of the things I think I remember see you saying again in like a super old blog was that each floor is about the size of North America maybe, or maybe it was the size of the mainland US was the description. So each floor is a huge area of space. Uh, so it would make sense that there are places on each floor that are still undiscovered given that they have 130 some areas that are that size. Um, so it would make sense, but this is cool that we're actually getting more into a wild area. Uh, and in the wild area is the Mia Buchan village, where the uh, essence of bravery is. It's a legendary gem that contains all the wisdom of fighting. Uh, so we don't know what it is. Uh, even Jinsung says he doesn't know what it is yet or where it came from, which is really cool. Um, but we have this sort of backstory with Kalavan, where for generations the strongest ranker is the one that protects the gem. So of course that all leads to there being one bloodline, and of course within that one bloodline, uh, the strongest son and father keep battling until the fathers and sons kill each other and the next one carries on the uh, duty and whatnot. So, er, so Jinsun gives Kalavan this great speech about how he is kind of the pinnacle of that. They've kind of done this forced evolution, this forced um, survival of the fittest, and that has led to Kalavan being as powerful as he is. And he's like, instead of just being stuck here protecting that, bravery doesn't grow when it's all cooped up in a cage like this. Take that bravery and go out into the world and do stuff. Uh, so after giving him this cool speech, he leaves. And during that time, we learn that Kalavan smashed the statue and took the gem for himself. So that by the time that Yuan, or by the time that Ha Jinsung returned, uh, he had this peaceful Shinsu flowing through him that Jin, that gave Jinsung chills, uh, and Jinsung recognized that he was more than capable then of becoming a high ranker. Uh, so he says that he tried multiple times going back there and getting him to become a slayer, which is cool because. Like what I've been saying, and there was this weird discussion, I swear, sometimes going on the Reddit to try to find blog posts makes me depressed because of some of the discussions. Um, but yeah, people not really getting what made a ranker a ranker, or a slayer a slayer. And I think that by now we can pretty reliably say what makes a person a slayer 
is something that allows them to break rules. Because if they can break rules, they can probably break the immortality. So every Slayer we've seen or heard of so far has had something that lets them break rules. Bomb's an irregular. He can break the rules. Uh, Karaka has the power of the prince that comes from Zahard himself. So that sounds like something allowing him to break the rules. Joaquin has this power of a demon that even Hone said you need to use the power of the demon if you ever want to defeat me, which leads you to think it's possible to defeat him as long as he has the power of the demon. Uh, then we have blood fusion with Yama. Um, and then for Kalavan, what would be different is he has this gem from somewhere that's outside of the realm of what Zahard and his family know about. We don't even know what it is yet, but it's something that's going to take a powerful person and make them even more powerful, give them all the wisdom of fighting. Uh, so that would, again, be something special that probably allows Kalavan to break the rules to some extent. Uh, so they're all characters that have some rule-breaking ability or part to them. Um, so that is kind of what makes him a Slayer candidate, I guess. But he always turned it down. He trained for centuries and then left on a journey. And on his journey, he defeated all kinds of great warriors and made them his servants and gained the name Human Hunter. And I think this was translated a while back as Human Collector, which I actually think Human Collector sounds cooler. Um, but he gained that nickname, that title, and then somehow recently, and even Jinsung said he doesn't understand how, but somehow he went from a warlord who had his own army to being a member of Zahard's army and one of the highest ranking members of Zahard's army. So we still don't know what the story behind that is, what Kalavan's planning, why it is that he joined up, uh, why it is that he joined up in Zahard's army. So he definitely does have his own motives in there somewhere, which I think is really, really cool for the character. Um, and then we end off jumping away from them right as Kalavan's basically saying he's completely certain he won't lose to Jinsung. Uh, once we get back to what's happening on the 44th floor, the ruler jumps in because of how crazy Evangel's going. Uh, the ruler is Kun Royale Elliot, who's really cool. And one thing I noticed, I brought it up in the comments on the... Um, brought it up in the comments to the live reaction, is that he has horns and the ghosty eyes, kind of like Andrasi's. Andrasi has at least one horn. I think she might have to have two, but we haven't really, like, seen an angle where you can see both. But they're really small and kind of hidden by her hair. And her eyes are also kind of similar to them. And I would say, ordinarily, uh, it's just character design choice. But characters bring up Andrasi's eyes really, really often, always calling her, like, ghosty eyes or the one with the scary eyes or that bitch with the crazy eyes. Um, so it's interesting that Kun is from a different family as her. We don't know what family she's from, but uh, she definitely doesn't seem like she's from the Kun family. She doesn't look like the rest of them. But Kun Royale Elliot, maybe his mother was some sort of species that... He is half that species, and Andrasi's maybe like a quarter or an eighth that species. Uh, I don't totally remember Andrasi's backstory here. I don't remember if it was her real parents that the snake charmer killed, and then she got adopted by the ten families in order to become a princess, or if it was, um, or if, or if it was just adopted parents that found her that the snake charmer killed. But for some reason, I think it was adopted parents that the snake charmer killed. So we still don't know quite where Andrasi came from, uh, birth biological family wise. So uh, it's interesting that they might have some kind of connection there. Um, Elpathian then orders Sharon to pull everyone back because he's like, Elliot doesn't care about us. He doesn't care about Zahard's army. He'll totally just catch us in the fight and try to injure us, possibly. Um, but uh, Yuan Sung tries to back down Evankel because things are going a bit too far and there's some collateral damage going on. Uh, Yuri slash Evan, whoever's using the green stuff, it seems to be Yuri, though. Uh, they use the chaos that's going on to teleport the hostages away from Chonhi and towards Bomb. Um, and when Chonhi brings it up, Yuri tells her, you know, you can't just let hostages get killed. That's not really a way to handle hostages. Then right at the end, Charlie blocks the path of Bomb, Andrasi, and Misang. And I think that this might be okay. Because Bomb just defeating a ranker this early on, when we still have 
two-thirds of the tower to climb up. I think it's way, way, way too early. And I think a lot of people are scared of him defeating a ranker because it's way, way, way too early. Um, defeating one this early on before he's even anywhere near the top is probably a bit too soon. But Charlie is kind of weak on the ranker scale. I believe we learned when he was first introduced. Um, he's kind of a newbie and not that strong. But in addition to that, say Bomb is a third of the way up the tower, maybe he's a third his strength, and even if he's a third his strength, his objective isn't really to defeat Charlie, his objective is to free his teammates. Uh, and even if he does have to get into an actual fight, Bomb has Misang and Andrasi there with him. And we spend so much time on Bomb that we don't often pe pay enough attention to the development and growth of the power of his allies, but Andrasi is really, really strong too. She's a princess, and not just a princess, also just generally powerful. And in addition, Misang has really useful abilities like the Berserk Mode and Reflection. Uh, and in addition to that, Misang seems to be generally decently strong as well. Uh, and then if Bomb frees some of his allies to help him out, Boro and Sachi are both really strong, especially Sachi. I'm not sure if Siu said that Sachi was at Andrasi's level, or if he said he was stronger than Andrasi, but either way, Sachi is very strong too. Uh, and then of course Wangnan's got his new power up with the Excalibur or whatever. So there's a lot going on that I think it could be balanced, because it's not just some 1v1 fight that Bomb has to win or anything like that. Bomb's objective is to survive, it's to escape with the hostages. And he can totally do that against a ranker. I think he totally can't beat a ranker, or more like, more like he shouldn't beat a ranker. Um, that shouldn't happen. So, I feel like, though he shouldn't be able to, he doesn't need to here. So I think it might still be okay. One thing, though, is that with... And that's the other thing from the blog that I wanted to bring up, is they said... is Siu said that it was a logical next step for the ruler of the floor to show up because of Evan Kel going crazy. It's not really out of nowhere because we sort of knew this is the kind of outcome that would happen. Uh, Yuan Sung even said earlier uh, not to go too crazy. So this is logical given the lore of the story. But what I'm thinking is with Kun Royale Elliot showing up, we are in a weird place where before I was like, Bomb's team is so stacked, Zahard's army doesn't stand much of a chance right now. They've got the numbers, but they don't have the ability. But um, yeah, now they seem to have the numbers and the ability. Who knows if Kalavan can beat Jinsung or not. That's going to be happening, and we're probably going to get to see it since the arc is named Calavan. But on the other side of things, if Kun Royale Elliot is comparable in strength to Evan Kel, and since they're both floor rulers, and I think he's been a floor ruler longer than Evan Kel, then it seems like it's probably a good chance he's at least that strong. So those two, if they're comparable in strength, that kind of leaves just what? Just Yuri, Evan and Yuri Evan and Yuan Sung really to fight again and this is again I'll assume that Dorian Frog and below any anything assistant uh, division commander and below uh, let's say that Karaka's servants can handle them Deathbird, Death Lady, etc. Um, so if they're handling them and if they can handle them because it seems like um, seems like Yuan Sung was easily stronger than them but uh, not as strong as Chonhee, and Yuri has also al or has also already said that she isn't, or she's never been as strong as Chonhee. So, if that's the case, that leaves Elpathian, Sharon, and Chonhee to fight against those three. And Elpathian is maybe not as high ranked as Evan, but I didn't really see Evan getting involved in combat here. Uh, and we could have something where Yuan Sung teams up with... Um, Yuri to fight against Chonhee, or we could have Yuri stepping it up and finally defeating Chonhee and sort of earning a higher rank for herself, or we could have this kind of a three-way fight where Yuri's like, I want to protect the hostages, so I have to fight you, Chonhee, if you want to kill them, but at the same time, I'm not going to work with FUG and she's not going to forgive him for the bomb stuff, so she's going to kind of not want to, uh, she's going to want to fight Yuan Sung as well. So we could end up with a three-way fight there, which would be interesting. 
Um, and even then, that leaves Sharon with nobody. So at that point, they would have to hope for the escape or release, maybe Evan could release them, the escape or release of White and Karaka, and also hope for White to be at full strength. Because um, if Evan doesn't get involved in the, in the fighting, White at full strength, if he somehow gets there, should be able to take El Pathian because they said before that White at full strength was Kalavan level. So that would be fair, and then that would leave maybe like Karaka versus Sharon and Yuri versus Jondi. Or maybe Karaka will work with Yuan Song or something like that. So that would make things a little bit more balanced, but I like how things have changed drastically for, from me thinking, oh, Bomb's team totally has the upper hand here, to me thinking, oh, they totally do not. And then on the regular side of things, I even put in my notes that I'd like to see Rack's team some more next week. I just generally want to see their team some more. And I hope that ZU doesn't forget about those random cloaked people. I went back and reread those chapters to see if we had seen any of them. Uh, but no, we haven't seen any of those people yet. Uh, so I wonder who those characters are. We still haven't seen Ship's team in a while. So there's still a lot to get into. Uh, and Levy's still going to be doing something in the background. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going on there. I do love Calavan and Elliot so far. They're really, really cool. Uh, there's a lot of crazy strong characters, like strongest in the tower candidate strong characters. I mean, okay, maybe not that strong, but Evan Kell is within the top 60, and uh, Elliot's probably close up there as well. Um, Jin Sung obviously within the top 100, and Kalavan probably there as well. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. But, uh... Yeah, also I noticed with this too when I was making my notes and everything and saying how much I loved it, I guess I tend to love these lore and backstory type chapters. Because uh, I love this. One of my favorite chapters thinking back on was um, the... Jeez, uh, there was an ant on me. Um, one, of the fa one of my favorite chapters thinking back on that I reviewed and all that was uh, the backstory for Kaiser. I keep forgetting her name. But, uh, yeah, that was one of my favorites. Uh, and then there was the backstory chapter for Joaquin, which was really good. So I feel like I have, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit biased for these. But, uh, yeah, so either way, as a score, I don't think it was quite perfect. I'd give it 9.75 uh, combat sages out of 10. Calavan's really cool. Uh, but this turned into a bit of a long one because there was a lot that went on. Not only was it a long chapter with a lot of different scenes, uh, but they weren't just combat scenes. There was a lot of lore and dialogue. Um, so yeah, there was a lot to talk about. There's a lot of content. Uh, but I loved it this week, and I hope you enjoyed the video. So like if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this um, week's chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Subscribe for more. Um, uh, subscribe for more Tower of God much more on the channel. The hot Q&A will maybe be up a day or two late since I'm running a little bit behind, but I don't know how things will go right now. Um, so yeah, that's it. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. If you want a link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us there, just ask and I'll give you a link. That's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.